What's up guys? This is the first video of a series I'm gonna get into on how I take my photos and make my videos. The first one is how I took this cinematic drone light photo. The inspiration behind this photo first was I wanted to use this drone light technique. This is a well-known technique from like Instagram and YouTube and other things like that. I saw it a while back and had this idea brewing in my head on taking this really cinematic photo with a light underneath my drone, but something I like to do when I take photos is put a little story behind it, whether it's up to the viewer on what the story is, or if I have a very intentional story behind the photo, but I just want some dynamic to it or movement or story behind it or a legit vibe uh, to go with it. Instead of just taking a photo of things or someone standing there or, or whatever, put a little story into it, put a little, uh, little background on it, you know what I mean? So big inspiration on the style and overall look of the photo came from the film Super 8. Uh, I love J.J. Abrams, I think he's a great director. I think he makes really interesting films uh, with interesting styles and of course he's known for his lens flares and uh, I love lens flares and just anything that looks like a blockbuster film. I think it's I think it's fun. I know it's not the most artsy thing in the world, but uh, my goal with this was it, it's like I took a frame out of a blockbuster film, uh, specifically like a UFO, alien, extraterrestrial type of thing, right? And I'm also a huge fan of the cinematographer for Super 8, Larry Fong. He makes a lot of like big budget blockbuster type of films. And uh, I just really enjoy that look and feel that they that he gives and that similar cinematographers give. Um, it's just a fun, entertaining uh, look, you know? So that's basically the inspiration behind the photo and what kind of uh, got me going on the kind of style and look I wanted for it. All right, so now the question that you probably have is the drone build. How did I mount this light onto this drone? How did it fly? Did it work? Like, what were the issues? The drone I used, the Mavic Air 2, and I was a little worried it wouldn't be strong enough or big enough to handle the payload of the light. But I ended up working out just fine, and the light I mounted to it was an Aperture MC light, which is fairly small. So the only issue I ran into with the Aperture MC lights is that they have magnets on the back of them, so you can mount it anywhere on, on metal stuff and just sticks to it. It's, it's a great, great design, love it, use it all the time. But for this, when I velcroed it to the bottom of the drone, it interfered with the calibration and the compass of the drone. So I basically had to recalibrate the drone probably like 13 times whenever I was taking the photo and I had to take it off to calibrate, stick it back on, put it down, take off as fast as I could before it uncalibrated because it won't let you take off if it's, if it's completely out of whack. So if you have different lights, like the Joby Luma Cube or whatever they're called, if you have those, those would be the way to go. They're smaller, lighter, you can put them on either side of it or a couple on the bottom. But if you're wondering if you can use an Aperture MC because you have them laying around, you can. It's just gonna pose a little bit of a problem whenever you're shooting and kind of make it more of a lengthy process. But overall, it worked really well. So after I had the drone set up, I knew it was gonna work. Uh, it's time to go out to the location and shoot. I found a perfect open field to shoot this photo uh, in a nearby park that I live by. And it was perfect for a couple reasons. First, it was wide open uh, with a ton of grass, which I feel like is something you typically see in like an abduction scene in a movie or something like that. The next thing was there was trees right behind me. So I knew those were gonna show the silhouettes uh, when I did the longer exposure and I wanted some depth to the photo instead of it being just the light and then black, right? That's just, there's, it's just too, 2D. There's nothing, there's nothing to it, there's no depth. And so the trees helped with that. And then I took it a step further and the city I live in was behind this park. So basically it provided this glow whenever I had a longer exposure. And it even had some cell towers back on the mountain over there with some red blinking lights that even gave it more depth and more of like an eerie sort of UFO Super 8 kind of vibe. So actually getting the photo was kind of a challenge. Uh, I flew the drone and my buddy who shot the behind the scenes for this video, shout out to Marlon Cordova. Check him out on Instagram. He's a photographer and videographer as well. He is very talented, so go check him out. And thanks again, Marlon, for shooting this for me. So I basically flew the drone and Marlon made sure I was in focus and framed up properly once I got out there and then hit the shutter button for me. And the issue was I couldn't hear anything underneath the drone. All right. 
Test number one, let's do it. Is it in frame? I cannot hear, I can't hear anything. <laughs> it's, out of, it's in the frame! So we were yelling at each other the whole time and we basically had to make sure we were on the same page before I took off or else it was just massively confusing. I didn't know if the drone was in the frame. I didn't know if I was off center. I didn't know if I was in focus or not or what, what was in focus or uh, in, in frame behind me. And uh, I'm super OCD about my compositions and what's in the frame and not. I don't just fix it in post or Photoshop it out or you know crop it differently. I like to get it right in frame, uh, in camera, on location, so that way I can manipulate it in a better way later in Photoshop instead of fixing it in Photoshop. Also during the shoot, we were in front of these group of trees and we heard some like chattering noises, like birds coming from it. I thought nothing of it, didn't think it was gonna be an issue. And then they started coming out and flying over our heads while we were flying. I think the drone was kind of scaring them. Turns out they were bats and that's what the chattering noise was. And I have a terrible experience with bats. Like I've had two prior encounters with bats and both of them were terrible. I got hit by them, they attacked me, they swooped on me. And this time I wasn't playing any games. I went to a different location and ironically enough, that was a location I ended up using uh, as the final photo, the the best photo I thought. Uh, then a uh, bat came out and attacked us, so you know. Yeah, we've been hearing some chirping noise, and I've yeah. been like, what is that? And we, it turned out it was a bat. <laughs> we and Daniel told right. me his bat story. I don't like bats, man. I've had nothing but bad experience with bats. I'm out, I'm freaking done. But uh, you know, that's what you have to go through, I guess, if you want to uh, make cool things. So after about two and a half hours of shooting, I had the frames that I thought I really needed, and I, I was really happy with it. And um, so yeah, it was time to take it home and, and put an edit on it. And this is where it really took it to a whole other level. So the first thing I did was throw it in Lightroom, put a basic uh, correction and grade on it, just to kind of clean it up and uh, initiate that cinematic grade I was after. After that, I threw it in Photoshop and this is where the magic happened. First thing I did was throw a film grain composite on it. The next thing I did was throw in a volumetric light beam into the photo just to accentuate that drone light and uh, make it seem more like I'm um, getting abducted or there's some kind of thing above me casting this epic light on me. Then to make the drone light seem more glowy, and uh, this is a common effect used in Photoshop with people who do photo manipulation, is I basically took three effects, a curves, a levels, and a color balance effect, and made it brighter, and then put kind of a teal and green um, push on it. Put those in a folder and put a mask on it, invert it, take a brush, size it up and click once every time and then do that back down and that just gives a kind of glow effect uh, simply through just uh, color grading. After that, I did a final kind of teal and green push on it with a color balance adjustment to marry all these effects together and blend them in and make it look like it was there from the beginning. And that's basically how I took this cinematic drone light photo. It was pretty simple and straightforward after it was all said and done and it turned out really nice. And I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you in some way. And if it did, like this video, it really helps. And subscribe for me so you can get notified when I come out with more videos like this. Give me a follow on Instagram if you wanna see all my photos and videos I put out. I push all my work out on Instagram as I primarily make ads for social media. Hope this inspired you to go out and take some cool photos and maybe even try this drone light technique. And if you try it, be sure to let me know in the comments below how it worked out for you. Send me a video, send me the photo. I'd love to see your guys' take on it and what you were able to do with it. Go out there and have fun, be creative, do good things. See you next video, guys.